When I said you could do the intro, that is not what I had in mind. Get rid of that. How's it going, gang? And welcome back. It's episode number 10 of our Racing Let's Play today. We've had a winter break. We're back, and we're back with a bang. It is the Copa del Rey second round. Today, a little bit of a test for us, taking on Almeria, a team who currently sit top of the division above us, a team who were predicted to do well. They've lived up to their billing. I think in Football Manager, they might have a tycoon owner. I don't know if we can see that in game. They're, they're a team with a lot of money. They were really disappointing last year. They're going to want to go on a cup run. We definitely want to go on a cup run. Um, yeah, so someone's going to leave today feeling a bit disappointed. Anyway, you may have caught it in the top right. It is the 5th of January. We have played a lot of football since we were last here. 12 matches to be precise, 11 of which have been in the league. And I'm pleased to report that for the most part, it's a lovely sea of green. Of course, the last episode was, without a doubt, two of the most difficult games in the season in Pontevedra and also Deportivo. If we just look at the league table, you can see they sit in third and fourth. Two teams who are doing very well, but... A recent resurgence in form sees us challenging at the top with Ponferrodina, who, of course, we've also played away from home and been defeated by. It was 4-3 when we played them then. Uh, we don't play them in all that long. In fact, I'm already looking towards the end of February thinking... That's a tough couple of games on the horizon. But yes, a whole host of games played since you were last here. Azara and Salamanca, uh, two kind of really great games to have just because they were the two teams right down in the relegation zone. A confidence builder, 5-1, 6-1. As you're going to come to see, Mejica, he's started to score goals, everyone. He's discovered what a goal is. 11 goals to his name in 18 appearances. Yeah, after a very, very slow start, five goals in his last five, He's looking like he's doing the business. Anyway, through the month of November, we got four wins in a row. Three clean sheets in here as well. Really good defensive performances, which was great to see. Bicho continuing to score from the penalty spot. He currently has 15 goals this season. Ten of them have been penalties. That is just obscenely high. The man is just unbelievably clinical from the penalty spot. And, uh, well, he continued to be uh, clinical from the penalty spot as we took on Real Union to start December. A 4-2 win there. Mejica grabbing two. Bicho grabbing two. Unfortunately, against Cultural Leonesa, one of the teams who were expected to do very well this year, uh, haven't done very well this year, they decided to play Party Pooper. A goal in the rain. It was a good goal into the top left corner. One of those ones that's hard to be mad with. But in this game, we didn't create enough. We didn't score a goal. Yes, perhaps we were a tad unfortunate. Yes, Mahika had a goal disallowed for offside. But as you can see by the average ratings, this was a game where we didn't really perform. The good news is we bounced back with two wins. One in the Copa del Rey, one against Lagrones. I'll be honest, a 2-1 win against one of the teams with the worst defences in the league. Little bit disappointing perhaps I don't, I don't want to use the word disappointing I'm not sure what word to use to describe this we should just be doing better that's the long and short of it anyway of course with it being January now the transfer window has swung open we've done a little bit of business we'll, co we'll come to that in a moment but firstly Cedric given a pay rise yeah needed to renew his contract don't want to lose him on a free nine goals four assists this season he's been very good and while another man who's been very very good for us is Pablo Torre who has agreed to sign a new deal with the club, despite interest from elsewhere. I'm sure he doesn't mind the pay rise uh, one little bit. You can see here, now on £6,000 a week, minimum release clause of £150 million. Though if someone wants to pay £150 million, they can have him. But besides that, no intention of letting him go. Also, his stamina's up to 10. He's continuing to get better. I'm feeling optimistic. Now, if you're an eagle-eyed viewer, you might have noticed a new name here. That there is one. Can you can you see it? Can you see it? Is it that Just Andy has now been nicknamed Just Andy by popular request by you guys? I kind of want to nickname him the Better Andy, but that might be a little bit harsh on Andy. Car I, I don't think I could be harsh on Andy Carroll to be honest. I think he deserves everything he gets, but maybe I should just nickname him the Worst Andy, and then we can still have Just Andy. You know what? It's ma it's making me feel a lot better about Andy Carroll as a signing. The worst Andy. Anyway, that's not the change I was talking about. The change I was talking about is Fran Kabir, signed from Nastic uh, for £140,000. Not a small fee paid, but this man, he is a standout player. He was in the Media Dream 11. Then when I signed him, they removed him from the Media Dream 11. I feel like the media just hate us 
Can I go? Can I go with that as an excuse? The media they detest us. I'll tell you who I don't detest though. Fran here. Yeah, not a cheap fee paid, and at 29 years old, you know, maybe you could argue he's a little past his best, but his quality is absolutely undeniable. And uh, it might seem a little counterintuitive given the fact I've just given Cedric a new contract, but Fran Kabir here is going to be a new inside forward uh, out on the right hand side, cutting in on his left foot. He looks formidable. He can also play as a striker. Andy Carroll's been a bit disappointing. I'm looking at Capani and the fact he's not really played much this year. And when he's played, he's been a tad disappointing. And I'm thinking, might send Capani home. Might bring in Kabir then to take his spot in the squad. Uh, truth be told, you know, much like Gibua, Capani has just kind of found himself this year on the fringes. Just not quite good enough for us. I've got better players contracted to the club. And uh, you know what? They are here still really as cost-saving measures. So anyway, Kabir is the only new man to join us in January thus far. We have got a few players we're looking at signing. Ben Knight and Resende, two players you might be familiar with in Football Manager. Two players who I've had a bit of experience with, at least when it comes to Resende. I had him for a save game in Italy last year when we managed Monopoly, and he was amazing. He doesn't look quite as impressive here, but he's available as a free transfer as his contract at Benfica is running out. If he agrees to sign for us, great, I'll have a party. If he doesn't agree to sign... I might feel a little bit sad, but I always have this feeling. In fo Maybe this is just me. In Football Magic, if I sign a player I've had in another save game and they were really good, and then they come to my new save game and just let me down, I kind of just feel like their legacy's ruined. So, Resende, maybe try not to ruin your legacy. Maybe he'd be doing himself a service if he just turns us down, now that I think about it. Ben Knight, another man we're looking at signing. If it happens, it happens. I don't think it will. We're trying to sign him from Man City. Uh, yeah, m more news as it comes. Really, much like last year, looking to sign some youngsters who I could potentially flip on and sell on for some money kind of further down the line. That is one way that we can really help our finances as a manager at the club. And well, really, the finances definitely need all the help they can get. Two million pounds in the red. That is just not cricket. The only silver lining for me, I suppose, is the board... They love me. They think I'm the best thing ever. They're delighted with Mahika's performances, as am I. They're delighted with the support in the squad and the positive atmosphere in the changing room. I feel like everything's kind of going quite well. Outside of the finances, we're good. It's, it's kind of like we're in a nice, comfy little house and there's this raging storm going on outside. Um, I'd be lying if I was to say I'm not a tiny bit worried. Administration wouldn't be ideal, would it? I mean, if we want to try and find a positive, we've nearly paid off half the debt. So there's, there's that. Is that is that a positive? Maybe. I mean, there's still over 50% of it left. I don't know. Anyway, I already talked about the opposition for today's game in Almeria. This is going to be tricky. This is a tough game against a team who are top of the league ahead of us. However, I do feel like it presents an opportunity for us to get a taster of what we might be experiencing next year. You know, taking on one of the best teams in the league that we could go into... Let's see how close or perhaps even how far away we are from being good enough to play at this level. In terms of our team for today's game, Machado is in goal. I know he's been a bit hit and miss, but he is still improving in training. He's uh, he's done okay. Seven clean sheets in 19. I feel like all his worst mistakes have happened in the big games that you've been here to watch. Well, as soon as you guys leave and I'm not recording, he's blooming brilliant in goal. Just a bit of kind of camera shyness. Not going to work once we get to La Liga and all our games are on TV. But for now, I'm keeping faith in him. Lopez Hill, Matic Carassa at the back. That's been very, very standard through this year. Notably, Lopez hasn't been getting any injuries. Last year, he kept getting injured a load. I say he has had a couple of little injuries, but only for a few days. For the most part, he's been fit. I'm very, very grateful for that. Moving into the midfield, you can notice here that Reco has found himself dropping out of the first team just a little bit. That is because just Andy has come into the team. And I mean, look at him. Look at him. He's well-rounded, consistent, loves big matches. He's been pretty good so far at centre mid. And alongside Di Vicente, they've got a little bit of an understanding. They've got a little bit of chemistry going on, I feel like. They are working really nicely as a pairing. Bicho's out on the left. His goal scoring's kind of been great. Kabir makes his debut for us today. He has already scored nine goals this year in our league, um, but ultimately it's going to be interesting to see how he transitions into our system. Nastic are a team kind of very mid-table, very average. I'm hoping that with the kind of service we can provide, he is going to dine on goals for us. Torre, of course, with his new contract, with his new 10 stamina, 
He's at number 10 for us, playing the centre attack in mid position. And Mohika. I mean, I'm I'm becoming a big, big fan of Mohika very, very quickly. I'm hoping that he's going to bag some goals for us. And, uh, well, you know what? We're underdogs, but we're at home. Let's see what we can achieve here. The Copa del Rey. And it's the second knockout round. We've been here before. I mean, last year we lost at this stage to La Liga opposition. The draw was slightly kinder to us this year, although it still could have been an easier draw, to be completely honest. But we'll, we'll see what we can achieve. The fans are here. We're here. And Bicho's going to lay it off to Pablo. We're on the attack early. And Pablo's long shot goes just wide of the post. What an insane effort that was from range. Corner now. Pablo, he's had a long shot. Now he's going to turn provider. Ball cleared away to Bicho, who has it in the wide area. Players queuing up in the middle. He can't beat the first man. Now it's Rodriguez bringing it forward for them. Sadiq charging down on our defenders. We've got plenty of men back here to try and deal with this. Lazo now with it, bringing it forward down this near side. Do not foul him. Be sensible. That is a great block by Carassa. Marcel, though, to Sadiq, and he hits it from point-blank range. The keeper can't react, and it's 1-0 after four minutes. I mean, I did know going into this game, taking on a team in the, the, you know, the league above us, it was going to be tough. It was going to be a proper test. Kind of wish that we'd got further into the initial test of, can we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, kind of by more than four minutes. It's not a particularly good omen for what could be to come. Okay, Pablo on a corner, the second of the game. Last time we saw one of these, we conceded, but maybe this one's going to be different. Pablo, Kabir on his debut, dinks it wide to just Andy. Andy, what can you do? He kicks it straight at the defender, and then he kicks it at the defender again to make sure. I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve there, but now they're on the break. We need to be wary. Sadiq has already got one goal. He is quick, isn't he? He's massive as well. And Matic puts in a tackle. I thought it could have been a penalty. It turned out it was an inch-perfect tackle. I want to find out more about this Sadiq chap, because right now everything is coming through him. Carbia, on his debut, of course. What can he do for us? Pulls it back to Di Vicente. Whipped back post. Bicho's there. And it's that iconic forehead of Bicho. He scores penalties. He scores headers at the back post. They are his two tricks. He's not a one-trick pony. He's a two-trick horse. And uh, nice nice to see Kabir involved in a goal on his debut. Di Vicente to Kabir. Switched across and Bicho was there. Heads it back across goal. Makes it 1-1. Halfway through the, the first half. It's another pet corner. I was about to say penalty. It's not a penalty. It's a corner. Pablo, edge of the box. Kabir's there. He could shoot. He doesn't. Pablo, Bicho. Oh, we, I thought he was going to do it again. I thought we were about to have a moment of deja vu. But this time, the woodwork denies us. It remains 1-1. We look really good right now. But now there's another corner. We're all about the corners today. Machado collects that one. Now can we build from the back? Big ball forward looking for Mejica, who isn't going to get there, but it's now with Bicho. Oh, Bicho. I still call him Bicho. Make, make me stop. I can't. Di Vicente, where are you going? Carassa. Not seen much of Carassa today. Maybe he's about to get involved here as he's at the byline. Can he get the ball into the middle? He's going to go down. He's going to earn the penalty. Just Andy has been given the penalty by virtue of the fact he's the better penalty taker, but absolutely not. Get out of here. We have our penalty taker. It's this man. He's missed one in 11, I think. 10 scored. Can he get his 11th penalty of the year? Of course he can. He sends the keeper the wrong way. By which I mean he sm smashed it down the middle and the keeper's guessed wrong. He he's not really done anything to send the keeper the wrong way there. Not the most convincing of penalties. It's in the back of the net, though. Half an hour gone and we deserve to be ahead. I said earlier about Sadiq, didn't I? I wanted to see how good he is. He's blooming good. I mean, how does how does he compare with Kabir? You know, he's the new kid on the block for us. I mean, that gives you an idea of how good Kabir is. I don't, I don't want to start the Frank Kabir fan club too prematurely. He's blooming good for this level. I can see why he was in the Media Dream 11. Perhaps you can also see why I opted to swoop in for him for under £200,000, despite our financial issues. I was fortunate in that because we were about £10,000 below the wage budget, I could shift some of that into the transfer budget despite the, the financial predicament and make this deal. And I think it's a deal worth making. I'm hoping he's going to prove that for us, but he has the quality, he has the attributes. And well, he's on the ball here and he's going to hold it up nicely to Carassa, who's now going to hopefully find someone in the middle. He gives it back to Kabir, hits it, Carassa hits the woodwork. It's still in play, but the keeper reacts. 
And I think that is going to be the last bit of action for the half. 2-1 at the break. We've limited them. They had that one chance very early on. That was their only shot on target of the game. Lots of reasons for optimism so far. Still going to tell the players I'm not happy. I am a little bit happy. But I, feel, I think if you tell the players you're happy in Football Manager, it guarantees that the next half is a write-off. It guarantees you're going to bottle it. So I'm, I'm going to just be angry and I'm going to be mean. And maybe Pablo, the machine, is going to come good here. It's, it's another corner. I feel like today's episode just needs to be called the corner episode. Kabir, oh, he should have scored that. Good save by the keeper. Not the most ferocious of efforts on goal. But an hour gone and we look blooming good, if I might say so myself. Mahik has been quiet. I might bring Kabir into the striking position and bring in Cedric on off the bench. That might be the play here, although let's wait and see what is about to unfold because Almera, uh, I mean, Almeria, they can't be bad for this entire half, can they? And while Rodriguez hits the woodwork, Oscar Hill gets it away. And Almeria might feel a little unfortunate not to get the goal there, right? Kabir, go up front. Cedric, you come on off the bench. Lopez at left back. I'm going to bring in Akiyeme for him. Because Akiyeme, our first of hopefully many players, will be loaning from Barcelona during our affiliation with them. With 20 minutes left, though, I'm, I'm just going to start to time waste. I was about to say a little bit. As much as I can. Let's kill the clock here. Let's make sure that we get the result. Di Vicente, I want the upset in the cup. Last year, we lost 1-0 against La Liga opposition. I want to show that against teams in the league above us, we are good. Akiyeme, Bicho, hits it, gets his hat-trick. I love this man. I might be in love. I might be in love. Um, it's 3-1, 20 minutes left. We absolutely deserve that. I was a little bit worried after our great winning run to only lose one game since you were last here. We'd come back against a team in a higher division and we would flop and we'd be bad and it'd be awful. After we conceded within five minutes, I was concerned. I think I was misinformed. I did not need to be worried. We're blooming back. We've had a winter break. This is the first competitive game of the new year. 2022 It's going to be a great year for us all. Look at this. The time is just trickling away. They need two goals just to kind of take it a little bit further. I feel like this is done. I don't want to start singing and dancing too soon and then end up looking like an idiot. Marcel's through. Okay. Oh, I mean, Mached even Machado's turned over a new leaf. He's actually saving stuff now. Go on, my son. And now they're heading it over. Right, that, that will do me for the game. I'm still going to demand more. We want four. Get Bicho his fourth. Or get Kabir a goal on his debut. Either of those... Kind of, I guess, outcomes would be delightful as Cedric comes through and Cedric tucks it away. We might have a cup run to look forward to this year. And if there was any concern when you looked at the league table that we might be pulling away a little bit, we've got some big games, as I've already mentioned, at the end of February. How does a cup run sound to maybe distract us a little bit from our league campaign? Cedric, very, very nice finish into the bottom corner. 30 seconds left. Football manager, I don't need to see it. I mean, I, although I do enjoy seeing uh, the, the kind of time-wasting tactics on display. Karasa, Kabir, could this be it? A goal on his debut? No, he's blazed it wide. Andy Carroll did that, and then he got injured two days later. <laughs> History. Don't repeat yourself. If there's a football manager god, just don't injure him. Please. Andy Carroll I could live with. Kabir would be tragic. Just like that pass. That was... Awful. <laughs> to be, to be, I don't know what we've just seen. It's going to finish here. 4-1, though. What a great performance. You can see Bicho, man of the match. It's 9.6 rating for him. Kabir, maybe a little disappointing compared to the players around him. But look, we'll, we'll put that down to him being new around here. He's learning the ropes. He's working out where he's at. Ultimately, it's a 4-1 win that sees us go forward. And now just Andy's got injured. No more injuries, please, for the rest of the year. We will praise that performance. And, uh, well, looking ahead, the Copa del Rey third round is in 10 days' time. I assumed it was going to be further away than that. I'll see who we get drawn against. Of course, we got a quite big draw, I suppose, this time around. When's the draw? It's, it's in two days. You know what? I was going to leave you on a cliffhanger. Let's not leave it on a cliffhanger. Let's go forward. Also, Resende. £450 to be deducted from the transfer budget. I think, I think we can afford that one. Okay. Moment of truth, Copa del Rey, third round. 
There's not as many names here as I expected there to be, although on an automatic draw we could be here a while. Sevilla. Don't really want Sevilla. Granada. Where are we? Just just pull us out of the hat. Put me out of my misery. Lots of the La Liga teams being drawn against one another and just being drawn out early. Seven of them out. Now eight of them out. Now nine of them out. Barcelona still exist and we still exist. And there is a forever diminishing a number of teams here. Real Madrid are gone. It's us. Who are we playing? Huesca. You are a team in the league above us. They're currently ninth in the league above us. Okay, so I've had a little bit of a think on this. Plan for tomorrow. Huesca. We'll take them on in the Copa del Rey. If we beat them, double header. We'll play the next round of the Copa del Rey then. If we lose against them, I'll find a league game to throw in as a bonus to help us hopefully cheer ourselves up and watch the lads win a game. There may be a little bit of transfer business going on in January as well, but I think you guys enjoy the double headers. Given how the league's looking right now, there is a little bit of a cushion between ourselves and Pontevedra. I think this cup run is going to be quite nice to focus on, at least in the immediate future. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. I do hope you've enjoyed it as always. A few good signings, I think, uh, in terms of the result. Blooming brilliant. Hopefully, we're going to be able to repeat that tomorrow. I'd like to go on a cup run. Definitely makes me feel positive about our prospects, not only to get promoted this season, but also looking ahead to next year. Either way, as I said, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do slap a like on it. If you're somehow new around here, I don't know how you stumble upon this video and then make it however deep into the video we are now and aren't already subscribed. But if you've somehow done that, if you've stumbled on in here, you've enjoyed your stay, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Said that very long-winded way for the one person that applies for. Until next time, it is me, Jack. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll talk to you guys then. I'm out.